town councils. I worked for years with the urban councils and the town councils and um, I remember with the Tidy Towns competition a long time ago, people weren't really interested in Tidy Towns in Westport back in the 80s and we started planting shrubs and trees and every Saturday night they used to throw them into the mall. <laughs> we retrieved them again every Monday morning so that was something we, we did for a good few years until people got tired of putting the trees and throwing the flowers into the mall. And But one man in particular uh, was very much supportive of the Tidy Towns competition that was the late Sean Stanton years ago. Sean and I were, were good friends and we eventually got the whole Tidy Towns thing kind of off the ground back in the 80s and we started winning competitions then back in the Westport Urban District Council. We had no budget of course, we had no money, but we did have these FOSS schemes and they are fantastic for planting trees and planting flowers around the town because we had we hadn't the price of a barrel of chair to fill the potholes, but planting the <laughs> trees and flowers was much cheaper, so we did a lot of that kind of work. And eventually we started winning small competitions before before the community took uh, ownership of the whole Tidy Towns competition. And uh, it was only then when the community uh, put their weight behind it and, and, and people got involved in voluntary capacity that the town really bloomed and the Urban Council could stand back and allow the people to take ownership of, of the whole organisation. And Martin Kane, uh, who, who I, I got to know in, in the latter years when I worked in the council, he was a great man of course as a volunteer and he, he worked uh, tirelessly for people who were I suppose on the margins of society and he had his own difficulties going way back but he, he, he was a man who de devoted his whole life to helping people. And I met him on Inish Turk one night of all places, because the Westwood Urban Council and Inish Turk don't have too much in common. <laughs> but we all got sent out in a boat there and we had a couple of drinks and we had a lovely night. But Martin talked about himself at length to me that night and he, he sang Amazing Grace that night and he brought the house down. I didn't know if any of the councillors here at the time, but he sang Amazing Grace in the community centre there and, and there was a huge silence after he sang it because he sang it with such passion. And uh, that's why I mentioned it in the poem, in my little, I wouldn't call it a poem, it's just a few lines of dedication to, to, um, to Martin. And I mentioned it in the, in the piece here, so I'll just read it. And um, it's self-explanatory really. Um, and but it, it, the, the song itself was something he took to his heart, and it meant, it meant a whole lot to, to Martin. After he won his battle, he sang Amazing Grace. Seeking out the vulnerable, became his vocation. Raffles and food appeals, his chosen sacrifice. Softened the pain with reverent discretion. His heart burst, bursting with empathy and love. Oh, he showed us all how we could live. Thank you all very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.